Hi! Welcome back to the Eldritch Hearth. I'm not sure what day it is, but today we're going to be covering the murder of Caitlin Arquette. Lois Duncan is a beloved author by Gen X and Millennials alike for her suspenseful young adult fiction. Even if you don't know her name, you probably know her titles like I Know What You Did Last Summer, Locked in Time, and Killing Mr. Griffin. Several of her novels were made into movies, and she was known as a pioneer of the movement for writing thrillers and horrors for young adults. But all of that changed with the murder of her daughter, Caitlin Arquette, on July 16th, 1989. Caitlin Claire Arquette graduated from Highland High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico in June of 1989. She was accepted into the University of New Mexico and had plans to go on to medical school. For now, she was working in the clothing department at Pier 1 and had recently moved into an apartment with her boyfriend, Zong Win. However, after only living together for six weeks, on July 16th, Caitlin told her mother Lois that the couple was not getting along and she intended to break up with Zong. She asked her mother to lie to him if he asked where she was because she intended to go out to dinner with a friend. Caitlin spent that evening with the friend from 9.30 until 10.45 p.m and then she left their home and turned down the road toward her mother's home. At that intersection, someone pulled up next to her and shot her twice in the head. Her car continued rolling and ran into a light pole. Lois and her husband were notified shortly after midnight that their daughter Caitlin had been in an accident and was at the hospital. When they arrived, they assumed at first that she had just been in a car accident, and then they were notified that their youngest daughter had been shot. While they waited by her bedside to see what would happen, the police arrived at her apartment with Zong. Zong appeared unaware of Caitlin's accident. He told the police that he had expected her to come home that night, and then he joined her parents at the hospital. Caitlin died about 24 hours after the shooting on July 17th. On July 22nd, Zong stabbed himself in the stomach in apparent suicide attempt while at a friend's house. The attempt was unsuccessful and the police continued to insist that they did not see him as a suspect in the crime and the attempt had been made in his grief over Caitlin's death. The investigation went cold until six months later in January of 1990 the police, through an informant, picked up 16-year-old Robert Garcia. Robert said that he and three other friends, Dennis Martinez, Juvenal Escobedo, and Miguel Garcia, had shot a young woman in her car on a dare. The police arrested the four men and brought them up on charges of first-degree murder. Within days, however, the charges against Robert were dropped when it was discovered that he had actually been in a juvenile detention center at the time. Eventually, in April of 1991, over a year after the charges had been raised, prosecutor dropped the charges. Robert Garcia later said that after nine hours of interrogation, he had finally confessed to the crime because the police had threatened him with prison if he did not. The police insisted that this was simply a random act of violence, and the case went cold. However, Lois refused to believe it, and she hired a private investigator to look into the matter. The investigator discovered some interesting information about Zong Win. He found that the young man was part of a large Vietnamese gang that was involved in car insurance fraud. Two months before Caitlin's death, Caitlin and Zong had gone to Southern California and had participated in a scheme that had netted them each over $1,500. Lois discovered that several phone calls had been made from Zong and Caitlin's apartment while Zong was at the hospital with them in the, while Caitlin was dying to one of the lawyers that was involved in this car insurance fraud case. Between this and witness testimony that Caitlin was intimidated by her boyfriend's friends who insisted on only speaking Vietnamese around her and mocking her, Lois was determined that this must be the cause of her daughter's death. She felt that the gang had hired somebody to kill Caitlin because she had planned on breaking up with Zong and therefore had no incentive to keep her silence about their fraud any longer. The private investigator also discovered an interesting tidbit or two that the police had failed to put into their report to hear her parents. When police arrived on the scene of Caitlin's accident, a man, Paul Apodaca, was at the scene. Police noted that he was driving a primer gray VW Beetle but they failed to question him, they took his name and released him from the scene and failed to follow up with any investigation into him afterwards. If they had, they would have discovered that Apodaca had several charges of violence against women. 
They also ignored witness statements stating that they had seen a gray VW Beetle around the scene. Lois wrote two books about her search for her daughter's killer. In 1992, she wrote Who Killed My Daughter? And several years later, she released a sequel, One to the Wolves. She never again wrote mystery or suspense because as she said in an interview, how could I ever again write about a young woman whose life was in peril? She continued writing, focusing on children's picture and chapter books, and she won several awards, including the Caldecott Award. Lois died June 15, 2016, without ever knowing the truth behind her daughter's death. However, in July of 2021, Paul Apodaca, the man who had been found at Caitlin's accident by the police and released, confessed to murdering Caitlin and two other women, along with raping several others. He confessed to stabbing Althea Oakley to death in 1989 near the University of New Mexico, and the other victim's name has not yet been released. In a statement, Apodaca said that he hated women because he was a nice guy and they only wanted bad guys. Caitlin's older sister, Carrie, who went on to be a criminologist because of her sister's murder, said in a statement from the family, the confession is just a start. The family has innumerable questions. It's been too many years since we've been trying to fill in those blanks by ourselves. Lois Duncan, a mystery author who won several awards for her mysteries, was unfortunately never able to solve the one mystery that mattered most to her. Were you a Lois Duncan fan? If so, tell me in the comments. Let me know what your favorite stories that she wrote are. As for me and Deadpool, we hope that when we come back on Friday, you do attend.